Thanks, sorry, sorry about that. I'm gonna to speak to you mainly from an advocate, advocacy perspective. Um, I am with Transportation Alternatives in, uh, in New York City, um, and nearly all of our uh, advocacy is focused on New York City, um, but it's my hope that uh, some of it uh, you, you will be able to, to use in, in, in your cities. Uh, and um, I love seeing the, the, the work that, uh, that Eric and Rebecca uh, uh, do, uh, the data that they produce, because that's, that's work that we use in our advocacy. Um, and Rebecca specifically mentioning uh, bringing uh, or telling stories is, is something that is central to the work that we do at Transportation Alternatives, especially bringing forth the victims' voices. Uh, and that'll be a central component of, of, uh, of what I'll, I'll be sharing uh, with you today. Um, so I'll basically mainly be, be sharing the uh, experiences that we've had in uh, pushing for uh, Vision Zero in New York City and then implementing it and again using the victims uh, based advocacy um, that is in increasing presence and an increasingly powerful presence in the work that we do. Um, and then uh, lastly I'll also uh, be talking about equity and uh, specifically traffic enforcement in Vision Zero and some of the challenges that it poses. Um, you know, equity is, is a broad topic. Um, traffic enforcement and, and, and the inequities that we see in, in much of traffic enforcement is a particularly challenging uh, area uh, that, uh, that I've worked uh, on uh, quite a bit and so, so that's one of the things I would like to share with, with you. Um, okay, so... Okay, so um, I had a, a few problems this morning with my uh, computer, so there's a few slides that I'm missing, but basically just wanna tell you briefly about uh, transportation alternatives. We are a, a nonprofit organization in New York City. We were, ba we were founded in 1973, so we've been around for 43 years. We are a membership-based organization with 12,000 dues-paying members, uh, nearly all of them in New York City. And we have 160,000 people in our network, um, people that we can reach through uh, email, uh, phone, um, and um, we, in addition to that, uh, we, we have activist uh, committees in all five New York City boroughs. Uh, so we actually have, there are five boroughs in New York City, but we actually have seven uh, borough committees. Um, of course, we are getting that much into the local areas of New York City. And we have about 1,000 activists uh, that are active in those committees that, that meet on a monthly basis and work on uh, local campaigns uh, that are really hyper-local, uh, specific streets, intersections where they wanna see uh, changes made. They work with, they work with local politicians um, and agencies and uh, will gather petitions and other uh, use other means to essentially leverage uh, leverage um, the um, the uh, support that we we we, we gain, um, and so speaking of the the victims based advocacy, some of you may be familiar with Families for Safe Streets, uh, which uh, is a group of people who have been um, impacted by traffic violence. Either they themselves have been um, been struck and severely injured, or they have lost uh, loved ones to traffic violence. The group was founded in New York City in, uh, in early 2014, um, which coincided with the time the Vision Zero was adopted as a policy uh, by Mayor Bill de Blasio. Um, and uh, it was essentially a group of parents uh, many of the mothers who came together after they had lost uh, their, their children. Um, and these are some of the, uh, the parents. Is, is it a bit dark there? Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry about that. Um, but essentially, Families for Safe Streets came about um, and in, in early 2014, late 2013. And um, and it really changed the 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 advocacy that that we do, and they brought new voices to to the the dynamic. Um, you can see here is a family uh, that uh, testified 
at New York City Council uh, in favor of a new law uh, that was um, that was enacted in 2014 called the right of way law and um, and it really changed the the game um, every nearly every city council member nearly every politician in New York City is familiar with families for safe streets and many elected officials know uh, individual families for safe streets members from their uh, local districts um, because the the members of families for safe streets are so are so active um, this right here it's a bit hard to see okay so I'll try and describe it for you at least you can see the most important um, part there's the speed limit of 25 and then the equally important is the the um, the families for safe streets members that are standing with uh, New York State Governor Cuomo uh, and this was in in 2014 when we launched and uh, successfully achieved um, a campaign to lower the speed limit from 30 to 25 miles per hour in New York City. So we at Transportation Alternatives, we do engage uh, with the state agencies and the state uh, legislator, uh, but only to the extent that we need to do so um, where state law uh, affects or limits what we can do in New York City. Uh, and I know that's something that, that most uh, cities have to, to deal with. Um, but this was a major, uh, major achievement by uh, Families for Safe Streets and the advocacy that we do. And so Families for Safe Streets essentially was established as a committee of transportation alternatives. Um, and, and they've, as I mentioned, have, have changed the game. Um, other uh, achievements uh, from transportation alternatives in recent years um, was to push Mayor de Blasio as a, when he was a candidate for mayor, to adopt Vision Zero as a, uh, a policy. And he then implemented, or uh, yeah, implemented the policy, uh, announced it within the first week of his administration in 2014, um, which again, uh, he did partly in response to a slate of three uh, children that were killed within the span of, of one week um, during the first week of his administration. Um, we have also um, pushed New York City to, uh, to, um, to uh, adopt a bike share program called City Bike, um, protected bike lanes, uh, car free prospect park and central park in, uh, in New York City. Uh, in addition uh, as, uh, to some local street changes in, uh, in New York City. Um, most significantly was a redesign of Queens Boulevard, which for many years has been known as the Boulevard of Death in, in New York City. Um, and uh, and that, those changes to essentially implement protect, protected bike lanes and uh, a host of the other uh, safety measures that, that Eric and Rebecca were, were talking about um, are being implemented there, uh, and um, and we are pushing the city to create more complete streets that uh, allow for for multimodal transport um, throughout the city. Um, and so, uh, 2014 was a, was a major uh, year for us uh, as advocate as advocates in New York City. Um, Mayor Billy Blasio signed uh, 16 laws uh, uh, or bills that, that became law that were all related to true traffic safety. Um, but that was just one part uh, uh, of actually um, getting the laws and as, as well as, as adopting Vision Zero as a policy. Uh, the next challenge again, which is, is, is why we, we're talking here today, is to actually implement it. And, and that's something that's uh, really a challenge. Um, and we at Transportation Alternatives have really gone from, from pushing Vision Zero to being uh, what we consider ourselves as watchdogs for Vision Zero and essentially protecting the, the, the brand of what Vision Zero actually means. And we do that through a, a number of different, different uh, methods. Um, one of them being that we we are holding the, the city accountable and really getting into the nitty gritty of, um, of looking at what each agency needs to do and what each, 
government institution needs to do um, in order to actually bring about uh, Vision Zero, because one of the things we're seeing is um, that there is little coordination between the different agencies. Um, and, and so what we did uh, in 2015 was to issue a report card essentially assessing and evaluating every uh, agency and every institution that we believe um, should play a role if they didn't already uh, in Mission Zero. And, and there are some uh, agencies that people typically don't think of as, as having a role in Mission Zero, uh, like the Department of Edu Education. Um, but the fact that uh, the Department of Education in New York City uh, transports uh, hundreds of thousands of, uh, of children uh, in school buses and other means, um, you know, they have a significant impact on, on safety uh, on, our, on our roads. Um, and uh, we also evaluated um, state agencies. Um, and so the list is long and we essentially graded every single one of these, these agencies. Um, and just one uh, more detailed example of what we did, uh, we uh, also recently um, published, well that's a bit hard to read, um, but we, we, uh, we published a, a report, and we have been doing that for the past two years, um, evaluating the work of the NYPD and their work in Vision Zero. Um, this, 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 uh, the title of this report is called Death, Danger, and Ignoring the Data, How the NYPD is Getting Vision Zero Wrong. The main takeaway from this report that we issued is that some precincts, some NYPD precincts in New York City are getting it right, um, while many aren't. Um, you have, there are about 50 precincts in New York City, and you have precincts that are immediately next to each other where one precinct has had an increase in the number of uh, tickets issued for speeding and for failing to yield, uh, you know, which are some of the most critical factors when it comes to traffic uh, crashes, injuries and fatalities, especially for pedestrians. Um, and so one precinct will have a significant increase, uh, which we see as, as something good. They're embracing Vision Zero, um, looking at the data, uh, what causes the, the crashes, and then acting accordingly. Um, but then you can have a precinct immediately next to it that actually has a significant decrease um, in the number of tickets uh, issued uh, for those, uh, those offenses. And uh, what we are really trying to get at um, is the culture that, that, that exists um, in many places, including at the police department, where traffic violence is really seen as, as a lesser form of violence. Um, and uh, and what we, one of the things we're trying to do with, with our work is to really um, instill uh, or to drive this culture change that, that looks at traffic violence as um, something that, that, that is serious and needs to be addressed on par with, with other types of, of, uh, of lethal violence. Um, we also did a, a detailed um, report on the district attorneys in New York City and the role that prosecutors play. Um, I'm just gonna go quickly through this um, I'm not going to elaborate on it, but um, this is just to give you an example of, of the, the uh, recommendations that we made. Um, so um, this essentially shows the, the cost of, of, uh, of delay in Vision Zero um, um, in that when uh, we we've, we've have for the past two years, we've seen a certain uh, reduction in the number of fatalities um, but the goal for New York City is to reach Vision Zero by 2024. And so as part of our advocacy uh, and bringing a sense of urgency really to reaching Vision Zero, uh, this is one of the, the, the charts that we, we produced that shows by the current rate of reduction in fatalities, we won't reach Vision Zero until 2055. Um, and the lives that hang in the balance is 1800, that that translates into, right? Um, and when you then couple, couple this uh, data, these numbers with the personal stories from um, some of the victims, um, that, that, that is something that, that tends to get the attention uh, of, the, um, of the decision makers. Um, we 
earlier this year had a, a campaign to uh, increase the number of speed safety cameras allowed in New York City, uh, called Every School. Um, in New York City, speed cameras have to be within a certain vicinity of, uh, of schools, and we're only allowed to have 140 um, cameras in the city. Uh, that means that 93% of schools in the city do not uh, have speed cameras uh, to protect them. Um, and so this was a campaign where, unfortunately, we were not successful. Um, but we'll be back in Albany next year for that. And this, again, is, is nowhere. We, we use some of the data that, that Eric and, uh, and Rebecca were talking about um, in, in our advocacy. Um, and um, one of the challenges when it comes to, uh, to equity is these numbers where, for example, the slide before, where we know that where cameras have been installed, speed cameras uh, violations, speeding violations, drop by 60%. Um, that should be enough reason to install the cameras near every school. Um, but we know that it doesn't necessarily fly that well. Uh, or it's not that easy to do, just do a, a technocratic implementation of that. Um, and um, politics play a big role. People's perceptions of what uh, cameras do uh, have a big impact on, on legislators, on elected officials. Um, we try to address that by stating that people only find $50 uh, for a ticket in New York City. Um, there are no points on your driver's license assessed uh, when you are ticketed through a speed camera. Cameras, uh, cameras only capture speeding by at least 10 miles per hour over the speed limit. Um, and very critically, cameras only monitor the speeding car, not the age, race, or gender uh, of the driver, um, which are some of the, the problems that we encounter with um, police officers. Um, speaking of, of equity, um, the $50 ticket is something that we can do in New York City. I know here in Portland, uh, by state law, uh, you are required to do at least $250. Um, and that's, that's a significant challenge. I know when, when uh, you're trying to deal with issues of uh, what we see in F Ferguson, uh, of um, people being uh, targeted certain uh, communities of color uh, where uh, speeding tickets, traffic tickets can be used as uh, pre, uh, preconditions for warrants being issued against people. Um, making sure that the level of tickets are fair and are perceived as fair is, is a critical uh, component. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly go through here. Um, so, Essentially, um, we know that um, we know that there are certain challenges with uh, enforcement, um, uh, with traffic enforcement. We know that uh, um, specifically, um, blacks uh, are twice as likely to be stopped uh, while driving as as whites, um, and and that's one of the the challenges that um, that we're dealing with when we are trying to. Uh, make sure that the NYPD in New York City takes traffic um, violence seriously. But at the same time, we also know that traffic uh, enforcement actually uh, does uh, have the ability to reduce um, crashes and fatalities. And we know that from the uh, reduction in annual U.S. deaths from, from drunk driving, which was 25,000 annually in the early 90s to 10,000 today. And we know from the best research that the reasons, the main reasons for that reduction was a, 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 a perception in people's minds of consequences to the actions combined with more severe uh, penalties and the district attorneys and prosecutors really using their soapbox um, to de decry drunk driving. And this helped achieve a, a culture change where drunk driving used to be accepted as, as you having one for the road, right? Um, and to today, where it is generally unacceptable, right? Um, and I'm going to skip this. Okay. So essentially, just um, to wrap some of it up, um, when we speak of equity in Vision Zero and the work that we do, we traditionally talk of, of the three E's that are necessary to reduce um, 
reduce crashes, uh, injuries, and fatalities, uh, engineering, education, and enforcement, right? But what we're really trying to do in terms of alternatives to take the three E's into the age of vision zero is to apply equity and uh, evaluation into, to the, uh, to, into the equation where equity and evaluation are uh, elements that need to be, um, to be used for each of the three E's of engineering, education, and enforcement, right? Um, so just, uh, sorry about that, okay. So there are some slides here missing, but essentially um, equity and vision zero we see as the fair and just implementation of transportation safety measures across all populations, including race, age, gender, geography, and socioeconomic um, condition. And, um, and so that's essentially uh, the role of equity and evaluation. Um, Eric talked about the need to, uh, for performance measured measures um, where the traditional approach to the t traditional approach to reducing traffic um, crashes and fatalities is to basically do a year-over-year -year reduction. Say if we achieve a five percent reduction over last year, that's that's good enough. But what Vision, Vision Zero really does um, is to set a, an end goal, uh, and then you estimate what is necessary to reach that. And that's where the performance measures and the evaluation really uh, play a role. So, um, sorry about the confused. Uh, notes, but thanks.